Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will learn about comprehensions in Python and more specifically, learn to make our code more readable, elegant, and shorter using list comprehensions. We will also take a look at set and dictionary comprehension with some examples. So let's get started. When we are analyzing and working with lists or sequences in Python, we will often have to manipulate, modify, or perform calculations on every single item in the list all at once. We may also need to create new lists from scratch or create a new list based on values of an already existing list. List comprehension is a fast, short, and elegant way to create lists compared to other iterative methods like for loops. It is a special syntax used by Python in order to fill lists. The syntax of list looks something like this. New list equals to expression for element in iterable if conditionals. A list comprehension consists of this square brackets containing an expression followed by a for clause, then zero or more for or if clauses. The result will be a new list resulting from evaluating the expression in the context of the for and if clauses which follow it. The expression are operation statement to be executed in iterations given by the iterable which have different elements. The iterable basically are iterable objects like a list, tuple, set, etc. A list comprehension is actually a list but created on the fly during program execution. List comprehensions are usually more human readable than lambda function or map function. The resulting code is as easy to read as plain English, making it easier to understand what the program was, was trying to accomplish when list comprehensions was used. All this will make more sense when we see some example codes. So let's take a look at a few examples. First example I want to show you is how we can morph this particular code into a list comprehension to find a square of numbers using range function as iterable. Typically when we do this, we usually start with empty list, create a for loop, iterate that loop over some range, and with every iteration we append the square of each item into that empty list. And then at the end we print the empty list. So when we run this, the squares of each of these numbers are output like this. Now rather than creating an empty list and appending each element to the end, we can simply define the list and its content at the same time. So let's rewrite this in the list comprehension format. So my squares would be a list here and the expression I want to perform is item to the power 2. I'm looping through the items for each item in this range. So this is my expression for, for item in this iterable. And this time when I print, I get two different results. The first one is from this execution, and the second result is from the list comprehension execution. As you can see, we are getting exact same output with the list comprehension. But the advantage now is that we only write one line of code instead of this chunk of code here. And not only is shorter and more readable to users, it is also actually faster. <laughs> Next example I would like to show is how to use list comprehension involving a nested for loop. So in this example, I have a nested for loop here that is basically creating a multiplication table for a given range of numbers. And basically what I'm printing in each line is the number times the multiplier equals the product of those. This is basically creating the table and here I'm printing each line for each of those tables separately. So that's the output here. Now just to be able to show properly, I'm going to reduce the size of this table here from 11 to 6 so that I only get 5 outputs for each table. Now how we can do this in using list comprehension is I will start with the same empty table, but now I'll have to fill this table on the fly. Basically, I'm for each line, I'm printing this stuff here. So that's the expression that I want to execute. I'm iterating or looping through different for loops. So my inner for loop goes in the beginning that goes here and then i have another for loop now since this is a nested table i would need a additional square brackets here and then outside the first square bracket i would have this for loop this is the list comprehension and then i can just copy the for loop to print each line let's run it again so this was the table that i had in the in the beginning and then i'm getting the same result with list comprehension here so that's how we work with a nested for loop in list comprehension 
The next example I would like to show is list comprehension to make a copy of the list. And for this, obviously there is existing list as iterable. So this is my existing list. And typically, like we showed earlier, we would start with an empty list and inside a for loop, we would append each of the item from that list into the empty list. But with list comprehensions, we can also do that more easily. And how that would look like is we would be adding name.title or name in names and then print my list again. Let's give it a run. This is the previous output with the list comprehension, we get the similar results. In this next example, I'll show you how we can use list comprehension with a for loop and if statement as well. So here we have the same list of names and I'm filtering all the names if the name contains ER within the name. And when we run this code, it gives me Peter and Robert and everything else is filtered out. To implement this using list comprehension, we again start with the empty list and then I can do name for name in names if er in name. So if you take a step back and look at this, the name comes from here and for name in names is basically just line six and then if er in name is line seven. So this is very intuitive way of writing readable version of the same chunk of code here. And let's just print this out and show you the result of this as well. And there we go, the same results using list comprehension. Let's make this example a little bit more complicated and say we have nested if statement. So instead of just filtering ER, I want to also filter by PET within the names. And then if both conditions are met, then I would like to append that into my new list. Within list comprehension, we can just make a copy of that if statement after the previous if, if statement that we had. And now when we run this, the list comprehension also gives us the same result. Now, interestingly, if we move this around, meaning if second if statement comes before the first, in this case, the output would still be the same because in both ways, we are just filtering ER and PET within names. Now, this might not always be true. If we are doing complicated mathematical statements within multidimensional areas, this might not always be the case. But in this case, it's true because it's performing two different filters within strings. So the output is the same in both cases. Next example is list comprehension involving if else statement. This time I'm using tuple as iterable. As you can see, I have a bunch of numbers in the tuple form as iterable. I'm starting with um, an empty list and using a for loop and if else statement to fill that empty list with odd or even number for each of the numbers given in the, the numbers list. And the output also is in tuple format here. So I'm printing the number and printing the odd or even alongside it. So let's run and see the output quickly. And if I'm to implement something like this using list comprehension, I'll start with the same empty list. I'm gonna add this tuple and that's the condition. If number modulo two and else, I'm gonna add this tuple. And now I have to give the for condition here. So I'll just copy paste that here and this should do it. And when I run this again with list comprehension, I get the same exact output also as tuples. In this next example that I have on the screen, I'm basically creating a two-dimensional chessboard. So in the chessboard, I have eight rows given by range one through nine. And for each row, I have eight different columns, A through H. I'm using nested for loop here to append element, which basically is a string attached with a numerical value. So I will get eight by eight two-dimensional matrix similar to this. I want to write this into a list comprehension. I would start with the same chessboard as an empty list. And then now because this is a two-dimensional matrix, I would have to have inner list as well. And inside that inner list, my statement would be this element here. For every iteration inside this uh, inner for loop, I'm creating this element. And this for statement goes after that within that nested list. And then the second for statement goes outside that nested list, but inside the outer list. And that is basically how we can convert this bit of code into list comprehension and get the same two dimensional matrix as output. 
let us also look at how to create a three-dimensional matrix with list comprehension. What I'm doing in this code is there are a bunch of buildings and each building has a bunch of floors. Each floor have number of parking spaces. For each nested for loop inside here, I'm appending whether each parking space is filled with a vehicle or not. So the true means the spot is empty. False means that there is park vehicle in that spot. And basically when I run this, it gives me true and false as a bunch of outputs for each of the building. So if I'm to implement something like this with list comprehension, I will start with that same all spots. And since now I have three nested for loop, I will need to create a nested list here inside that. And then this is my statement, basically. Choice, true, false. That would be my execution statement inside there. The inner nested for loop goes inside that list. Then the next nested for loop goes outside that list. And then outside that nested list goes the outer for loop and everything is enclosed within this outer bracket. So basically I'm saying choice of true or false for every spot in this range of five spots for each floor, for each building. So this is very intuitive way of writing this large code into a single line. And it's also very elegant and readable way so that's the beauty of using list comprehension. Let's just give it a run. Now we can see the same result here. Although the true and false in every spot is random. Bottom line is that we still have similar outcome. Each building has three floors and each floor has five parking spots. It's indicating whether those spots have a vehicle parked or not. List comprehension can also involve using functions within a statement of list comprehensions. So for this, I will take you back to the previous example that we did, the squares example where we had a bunch of numbers in using range function and we calculated squares of each of those numbers and printed out the squares. We can use this function and, and then use this variable as input to then calculate the square roots. So I'll write a function here and basically all it does is return the square root of the numbers that is given. So if I am providing x, it will return x to the power of 0 0.5, which basically is the square root. I'll use the same squares function to first create a list of squares. This is the same example that we did earlier. I have defined the function here, but at this point I have not used it. So just run it and we see the squares as our output. Now I'm going to use that squares as input into my uh, list comprehension. And that would be my roots square bracket for the list comprehension. And I'm going to basically use this function here, square root of x for x in squares. So this will be my input. So I have a list of items here from input. These are the items. And for each of these items in this square list, I'm going to use this function. Uh, let's keep that and also print an additional statement. Think print roots of those and let's see the output here. So these are my squares and these are the square roots of those numbers. So this is a perfect example to show how we can use functions within list comprehension. Next, I'm going to discuss set and dictionary comprehensions. While the list comprehension in Python is a common tool, we can also create comprehensions using set and dictionary. Let's look at the previous example of printing squares of a range of numbers. Now, a set comprehension is almost exactly the same as this list comprehension. You can create a set comprehension by using curly braces instead of brackets. Then basically I'm, I'm creating a set here. So let's make them part of our code and let's run this. Apart from using this curly braces instead of square brackets, there are two major differences that we need to keep in mind. In set comprehensions, the output will not contain duplicate items. So even if we are to do negative 1 in this case and run this again, the square of negative 1 and the square of 1 would still be the same output, 1. But in this output, we are only getting one instance of that value 1 because we are essentially creating a set out of this using set comprehension. And because set do not contain duplicate items, we only see one instance of that output 1 in this Another thing that we need to keep in mind is the output contains items in on, unordered sequence like you see here. The outputs are not in particular order and that's basically the essential property of set. Nothing wrong with the code here. We can also do uh, dictionary comprehension. Dictionary comprehension is similar to list comprehension just like set comprehension. We can create a dictionary comprehension by using curly braces instead of brackets. Apart from that, there are two major differences. The dictionary comprehension requires defining a key. And in dictionary comprehension, the output will not contain duplicate keys. So let's look at this example here. Here I have a list of numbers and there are duplicates here. List allows duplicates. Now we are to find squares 
Now these are the keys of the items here. Basically what we are saying in this dictionary comprehension is for every item in this number, we want to do item to the power two or item square and print the squares. And if we are to run this, we will get negative one and that square of that is one, zero, square of that is zero and similar output for all the numbers. So like I explained earlier, dictionary comprehension requires defining a key. The key in this instance in our example here is items and dictionary comprehension the output will not contain duplicate keys. Although we have two instances of negative one in input, the output in our dictionary we will only get one instance of that. So I think that is all for this video. Uh, key points to remember here is list comprehension is an elegant way to define and create lists on fly based on existing iterable. List comprehension is generally more compact and faster than normal functions and loops for creating a list. However, we should avoid writing very long list comprehensions so that our code remains user friendly. Hopefully you have seen the potential of list comprehension and how they can be used to write more elegant Python code. I really hope you learned something today with this video. If you like the content of this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, thank you.